Lab Lecture for Lab 8, Op Amps Revisited. In Lab 6, we wired in P-SPICE Op Amps and found that real Op Amps have limitations. Two of these limitations were current saturation and voltage saturation. We found that with current saturation, if the current from the output node was greater than the saturation current, then the voltage follower stopped following. If the voltage at the output node was greater than the voltage of the sources, the voltage were clipped at plus or minus 15. There is a third limitation that we will explore today called the slew rate, typically written SR. Slew rate is how quickly the voltage can change per unit time, but it's written as SR is equal to the change in voltage over a change in time, so the slope of V out versus time curve is what the slew rate is. Picture-wise, it looks like this. I plot V output versus time. It's the slew rate is then going to be the slope of this output. Part 1. Measuring the slew rate in P-SPICE. Real op amps, if the slew rate is higher than, say, 0 0.5 volts per microsecond, then the slew rate is exceeded and the op amp stops acting linearly. In other words, if SR is equal to 0 0.5 volts per microsecond, and I try to change the voltage faster than this, then the op amp isn't linear anymore. So to check the slew rate, we're going to use a voltage follower op amp circuit. So our source here is going to be a voltage varying source, which is a square wave voltage source. So here's our input voltage, and here's our output voltage. So if I start to look at this thing, Graphically, it should look something like this. So if the slew rate is not violated, then the voltage follower should be exactly as the input, and this should match up like this. However, if it doesn't follow and the slew rate is exceeded, then I should be seeing something like this. What you're seeing here on the right is that the output voltage is not following the input voltage. So in this case, the slew rate was below 0 0.5 volts per microsecond, on the right hand side you're seeing that the slew rate has exceeded 0.5 volts per microsecond so therefore the op amp is not linear anymore now let's go wire these things up in pspice okay i now have my pspice window and so what i want to do here is that i need to go in and wire the circuit so here i go so the op amp that i'm using is i'm using the ua741 and i'm getting it from the design cache okay so if I get that, and remember, once you have this thing, you want to rotate this thing vertically so that you have the positive at the bottom. The next element that's important is you want to get V-pulse. So when I get V-pulse, I'm going to have this voltage source here that I'm going to be using. So now I've wired my circuit here and I want to go through some of the details. So remember, you have to set up your voltages for VCC and VEE, which I posted up here. I ended up with two resistors. I used an off-page connector to define V input, V output. Remember, they're off here on the side right here where you can actually get it. And then I want to show you about V pulse. So let's go look at V pulse. V pulse requires us to convert frequency to a period, and we have to set the rise and fall, the delay, and the V1 and V2. V1 is going to be minus 1 volt, V2 is going to be plus 1 volt. Our delay time is going to be 0, that means that it starts right away. I'm going to set my rise and fall time of the square wave to be 0 0.001 nanoseconds. With we start by looking at the first indicated frequency, 2 kilohertz. The frequency is 2 kilohertz. I can write it as 2 times 10 to the 3 hertz. So when I look at the period, it's the inverse of the frequency. So then that should give me 0 0.5 microseconds. If the period is 0 0.5 microseconds, the pulse width is half of that, so it should be 0 0.25 microseconds. So the pulse width again is 0 0.25 5 microseconds, whereas the period is 0 0.5 microseconds. Now let's go to P-SPICE and see what I did. In P-SPICE, 
this is what I have. V1 and V2 are plus and minus 1 volt. Here's my rise and fall time and my uh, delay. And then I put in, for, and you can see that my pulse width is 0.25 microseconds and my period is 0 0.5 microseconds. I now need to edit the simulation and I'm going to run this for two cycles. So if I now go and edit the analysis here or the simulation, I need to change from bias point to time domain. And what I'm going to do here is if my period is 0.5 microsec milliseconds, then I'm going to run two cycles. So that's got to be twice that. So I got 1.0 milliseconds. And then my step size, I'm going to make it a hundredth of a millisecond. So I'm going to apply, say OK. So then I'm now going to run it. So now I get my probe window. So what I want to go do is that I want to go look for V output and V input. So if I click on this thing here, I'm going to get rid of all of the powers and the currents. So I only have the voltages. And now look, I have V out and V in. So I'm going to click on these. And so what you're seeing here is that I now have a window that shows V output in green, V input in red. And it looks like the output is following the voltage input very well. The reason why it's following it really well here is that because it has not exceeded the slew rate. The input voltage has not exceeded the slew rate. If I was you, I would take a screenshot of this thing and then stick it into something like, let's say, Word or Excel or whatever program you want to look at. So here's my image in a Word document, so I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to go do two more different simulations. I'm going to change my frequency from 2 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. That means that my period now is 0.1 microseconds. And my pulse width is half of that, so it's 0.05 microseconds. And I want to run PSPICE for two periods. You can see here that I changed my pulse width and my period. Now I need to go edit the simulation. So I'm going to run this for two cycles. Then this has to run for 0 0.2 milliseconds and then I'm going to increase this guy my step size by making it a thousandth of a millisecond so then I'm going to apply this and then I'm going to run it if you look at this thing it looks like the voltage follower is not following so well anymore so what we want to do here is that we want to go in and measure what this slew rate is. In other words, we need to measure the slope of this line and we need to measure the slope of that line. So what I want to do here is that I need to go in and start to find this. I need two points on this line right here. So I'm going to pick at zero. I know that that is minus one volt at zero seconds and each of these increments are 10 microseconds. So I'm going to pick a quarter of this curve. And the way I do that is that I'm going to go in and I'm going to search for X, X value. So if I click on this thing, I could now go in and actually look at this thing. So I'm going to say search for X value. And I need to pick a point between, let's say, I'm going to say in this case, I'm going to say 2.5 microseconds and it's going to search there and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say mark that point. So now I have that point right there and then I'm going to get out and I know I have that value. So I can move this out of the way so that I know that I'm talking about that point. So now I could go measure the positive slope. So now I'm going to do this with the negative slope. Now it looks like this guy is starting at 1 volt at 50 microseconds. So I just need to pick another point here. So if this is 50, I'm going to pick, just like I did over here, 2.5 microseconds. I'm going to choose 52.5 microseconds. So what am I going to go do? I'm going to go search for X value again. At 52 0.5 microseconds 
and then I'm going to mark that point and then I'm going to get out and then I'm going to move this guy over here and so now I have one two I could get the slope of this line I have one two I could get the slope of that line so I'm going to do a screenshot of this thing and then put it into Word and then make those calculations so if I compare the two slew rates, you could see that this is following very good. This one's not following so well. So now let's go look at the calculations. So the slew rate is the slope of V output versus time curve. If I focus on the rising edge, the slope then is between these two points. I know that it's positive, so I set it up my sign to be that way, and I get point zero. 0 0.568 volt for microseconds. That's what the slew rate of the input is. But note, the slew rate of the input is greater than that of the op amp, which is 0.5. So therefore, it stops following linearly. Now, you do it for the falling edge and replace it and change the frequency to 100k and see what it looks like. Part 2, Voltage Clipping. In Lab 6, we already verified voltage saturation. In other words, if the output voltage is greater than the saturation voltage, which is 15 volts, the output voltage is railed. Railed means that the voltage gets clipped off at 15 volts and at negative 15 volts. So clipping is essentially saturating that voltage. What we want to do is we want to do this with an AC circuit. In this circuit here, we have an inverting op amp, which tells us two different things. The output voltage is minus 5 V input. The minus sign tells us about 180 degree phase change in the voltage waveform. The gain of the circuit is 5. So any times 5 times the input voltage exceeds the 15 volt, I should get a rail or a clipping. Let's go run this circuit in PSpice. So here's my circuit from PSpice here. And what I did here is that I copied the previous circuit and then I pasted it in here. I added a 5K resistor and now I need to put in a new voltage source here. And I put the ground right here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick V sign. So if I pick V sign, I'm then going to come in here and I'm going to stick it right into the circuit right here. So now I have to adjust the values here. So I'm going to set the offset to 0 volts. The amplitude is a 1 volt amplitude. The frequency is already at 1K, so 1 kilohertz. And then the AC voltage I'm setting to 1 volt. So now that I have my circuit set up, I now want to run this thing for a period of 5 cycles. So from the previous time, we found that the period of a 1 kilohertz signal was 1 millisecond. So I'm going to edit this guy here. And when I edit it, I'm going to run this for 5 milliseconds. And I'm going to take a step size of about a hundredth of a millisecond. So if I apply and say OK, and then I run it, here's what I get from my probe window. Now I'm going to add two traces, input and output. So I'm going to go in, out. And what you're seeing here is that I now have a signal here. And what you're seeing here is that each of these lines here looks like one, two, three, four. That's two volts. So therefore, this is roughly at one, this looks like it's at one volt, and this guy looks like it's at five volts. Now to get a better sense of this, I can zoom this guy out. So if I come over here and it says zoom area, I click on that, I can highlight this, and then what you're seeing here is that you're getting a smaller segment here. So you could see that the output voltage is at five volts, the input voltage is at one square, so therefore I have one volt. So the input is one volt, the output is five volts, 
So therefore, it looks like the the inverting op amp is working. Furthermore, note that these guys are out of phase by 180 degrees, as expected. I just showed you how to simulate a V sine source in PSPICE for a 1 kilohertz voltage waveform. Now, you go answer the questions. Next, repeat this same analysis for V input equals to 5 volts. Then go answer all of the questions, same questions, as well as the additional ones.